I want to just say a few words, um, if I haven't made it clear already why I'm giving you these uh, two essays by Hartshorn and Jonas, uh, which I consider a pair, and that really is for obvious reasons, um, which I'm, you know, we made clear, but, but in, insofar as they both have the central idea of uh, the book of life with some differences, but the same central concept of um, using the metaphor of the book of life as a uh, concept of personal immortality or of immortality. Uh, I don't know how personal. That's uh, really a matter of comparing the two different ideas that they have of the book of life. In any case, these, uh, these essays are paired perhaps for that reason, but also in terms of the trajectory of the course, I, I offer them to you as um, less ambitious um, conceptions of immortality than the ones that we got in Plato's Fido and Landsberg's The Experience of Death. That is, um, you, you might say that in a certain respect, uh, Plato and uh, Landsberg wanted it all, especially Landsberg. <clears throat> in terms of immortality, um, uh, that is that uh, both of them conceived of an afterlife or a continued existence after our human deaths of some part of us, which would continue to have something that we would recognize as a life, at least in terms of further experiences. Um, that is that uh, the the kind of survival of death and the kind of immortality um, that each of them imagined, Plato and Landsberg, was one in which there was some promise of fulfillment. It was absolutely crucial in both cases um, that, that the continuation of, uh, of our existence after death in both of their minds was really not for its own sake. That is not for the, the mere sake of the extension of our existence, but rather that in both cases, it was a matter of fulfillment. That is that that continued experience that I, after death in some form, continue to have experience was really for the sake of the kind of experience that I would have. Well, remember that in, in Plato's case, he believed that um, the separation of soul and body was an event of great rejoicing for the philosopher, because it was then that the philosopher, freed from the shackles of the body, um, could find a real truth for the first time. So death is a kind of fulfillment of the philosophical uh, enterprise. With uh, Landsberg, uh, a somewhat different idea, well, a very different idea, the idea that the uh, individual, in a broader sense, can only become what he or she is meant to become uh, by going through death, that notion of hope. Um, that notion of perfection, that, 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 that is that, that death would offer an opportunity uh, for one to find a, a kind of perfection of the self, a fulfillment of the self that's not possible unless one goes through death. Um, this is absolutely essential to Landsberg too. That is that there had to be continued experience after death in order for these fulfillments to take place. One of the things that ties together uh, Hans Jonas's conception of the, the Book of Life in um, this essay, Immortality in the Modern Temper, and Charles Hartshorn's uh, conception of the Book of One's Life, a different, sort of different thing, but a slightly different thing in uh, Time, Death, and Eternal Life, is that each of them agrees, uh, perhaps Hartshorn more explicitly than Jonas, that, that death is the end of, of one's personal experience or the uh, end of all experience, that, that immortality in their mind should not be seen as uh, some sort of continuation of um, life as we know it or life as we can possibly imagine it. That is a life that would entail consciousness, uh, new thoughts, new things, new experiences in general, but that uh, our lives were complete upon our death. But the notion is that the, the record of our lives, what we have been, in the form of whatever metaphor you want to choose, both of them talk about the book of one's life and the image or portrait that one paints, that, that this is a permanent part of reality. And of course, it takes a theological view, as we see as well. 
I just want to say that just before we get into the details of Jonas's essay. And the reason I'm giving you both of these essays is to provide you with an alternative to the very ambitious notions of immortality that the previous two authors gave with, with something that I'm not saying it's more plausible, but something that's cer certainly a more moderate and less ambitious notion of what immortality could mean. 